I'd like to now talk about the transformation relationships for strains. So we've been talking about how you transform stresses from one coordinate frame to another. Uh, the same question can be asked about uh, strains themselves. So suppose I have epsilon xx and epsilon yy. Those are the normal strains in the x and y directions. So delta L over L in the x direction and the y direction. And the shear strain gamma xy in the xy plane. So that's the change of angle between the x and the y axes. And what I'd like to now look at is the question of, well, suppose we want to talk about a different set of axes, so x prime and y prime, and what would be the normal strains in the x prime and y directions, and what is the shear strain in the x prime, y prime uh, frame relative to the values in a given frame x, y. Okay, so, so here's the basic setup. So I have the x direction, maybe I have the normal strain in the x direction, normal strain in the y direction, and then I have the shear strain in the xy plane, so that's a change in angle, this 90 degree angle here between the x and the y axes. And now I'd like to consider what would happen if I rotated the coordinate system and I was looking in the x prime and the y direction. So I wanted to know the normal strain in the x prime direction, the normal strain in the y prime direction, and then what happens to this 90 degree angle. So that's the one between the x prime and the y prime coordinate axes. So just repeating, given these three strain components, what are these three strain components? So knowing the strain components in one coordinate frame, what are the strain components in a second coordinate frame? And this is exactly the question that we asked about stresses. Knowing the stresses in the xy coordinate frame, what are the stresses in the x prime, y prime coordinate frame? Now, the way we're going to go about this calculation or determining the transformation relationships is going to be a little bit different. Let's go ahead and start with the definition of normal strain. And I'm going to start with the definition of normal strain relative to the x prime, y prime coordinate frame. So the normal strain in the x prime direction is just simply the derivative of the x prime displacement with respect to the x prime coordinate direction. And what I want to do is convert this relationship here, and on, at least on the right-hand side, to give me something in terms of the strains in the x and the y coordinate frame. And the way I'm going to do it is first I'm going to represent the numerator, the ux prime, in terms of ux and uy, so the displacements in the x and the y direction. And I'll use my vector transformation rule that tells me that the, the x prime coordinate or component of any given vector is gotten simply by taking the dot product of that vector with the unit vector or the basis vector in that coordinate direction. So ex prime dotted with u gives me ux prime. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent u in terms of ux and uy. So I expand out the displacement vector in terms of the x displacement and the y displacements. And if I take the dot products, I end up with ux cosine theta plus uy sine theta. So that's going to convert my numerator here, or one of the components of the numerator, into something in terms of the x and the y coordinate frame and the angle theta between the two coordinate frames. And now what I need to do is convert this x prime, the denominator, or derivative with respect to x prime, into something that's given to me in terms of derivatives with respect to x and y. And that will then allow me to get strains into my expression here. So first, let's just think about the chain rule. The derivative with respect to x prime can be written in the following fashion. I can think of first taking the derivative with respect to x, and then the derivative of x with respect to x prime, plus the derivative with respect to y times the derivative of y with respect to x prime. So that's, that's the way I can convert the derivative. And what I really need to do is figure out what x derivative with respect to x prime is and what the derivative of y with respect to x prime is. So I need to know the interrelationship between x and x prime and y and x prime. But I can get that from the geometry of the picture that I had here. x prime, y prime is given to me by the rotation matrix times x, y. And so now I need to know what x and y are in terms of x prime, y prime. So I need to invert this relationship here. But it's easy to invert because this matrix here is a rotation matrix. So the inverse of it is just as transpose. So I have x, y in terms of x prime, y prime, which I get simply by pre-multiplying by the transpose of the rotation matrix between the two coordinate frames. And that allows me then to calculate what these derivatives here are. 
So the derivative of x with respect to x prime is cosine theta, and the derivative of y with respect to y prime is simply, or the derivative of y with respect to x prime, rather, is equal to sine theta. So now I can try and combine the results up together. If I do that, I have cosine theta to respect to x, sine theta to respect to y, acting on ux cosine theta plus uy sine theta. So I now need to go ahead and multiply this all out. So I'll have this first term acting on these two terms, and then I'll have the second term also acting on the first and the second term. So it's just like multiplying out monomials in the usual way. You can use that first outer inner last rule, so FOIL, if you remember that uh, from elementary algebra. And that will give us, that allows us to expand out the right hand side here. So let's go ahead and do that. If we expand it out, I end up with cosine squared times the derivative of ux with respect to x plus sine theta cosine theta times the sum of these mixed partial derivatives plus sine squared times the derivative of uy with respect to y. But these derivatives of the displacements are now, I can write them in terms of the strains. So, and in particular, ux with respect to x, that's just epsilon xx. The derivative of ui with respect to y is just epsilon yy. And this combination terms here, the derivative of ux with respect to y plus ui with respect to x, that's just the shear strain, gamma xy. And I'm going to go ahead and write it using epsilon xy, so that's the tensorial shear strain. Remember that gamma xy was the engineering shear strain. And gamma xy was the tensorial. And the reason for writing in terms of tensorial, if I do that, I'm going to have to introduce a factor of 2 here. So I end up with 2 epsilon xy. But the reason for doing this is that this expression here now looks identical to the one that we had for stress transformations. So it's when we're doing transformations of strains, we usually use the tensorial shears so that the relationships look just like we had for stresses. So in particular, if I put it in matrix form, it looks absolutely identical. I have the strains in the prime system are equal to the rotation matrix times the strains times the transpose of the rotation matrix. So I have the exact same look that I had when I dealt with transformations of stresses. So there's no extra relationships that have to be learned here. We get the same result here. So exact same rules that we had before. Uh, if you want, you can also write down in double angle form. So, and you can just use the expressions that we had before, just replace the normal stress in the x by the normal strain in the y, replace the normal stress in the y by the normal strain in the y, and then when you replace the shear stress in the expressions, remember to replace it by the tensorial shear strain of the system. Otherwise, you'll be off by a factor of two in all your calculations there. Um, and because of these relationships, we also have invariants. So in 2D, you have the trace of the strain, and the determinant of the strain gives you the, the characteristic polynomial for the strains. And the roots of that then give you the principal values if you want. Uh, if you're in 3D, we have the same setup as before. You have three invariants, and you have the characteristic polynomial, polynomial for calculating the principal strains in this case. So this would be the maximum normal strains. Uh, you can get the maximum shear by differencing the third and the first and dividing by two, just like you would before. But remember, that's going to give you the maximum tensorial shear strain when you do that. Okay, So uh, everything carries over uh, from the stress case. You can also have a more circle of strain if you want. Uh, and you can have maximum shear angles, principal angles. Everything carries over identically. It's just replacing uh, the stress uh, components by the strain components.